welcome world. Jack of all spades, CLT, back like the name on a jersey. I am the beloved one. To my left, we have the pride of Africa, Ken Wabibi. What's up, y'all? It's pride of Africa, Ken Wabibi. Shout out to Kenya. I feel like I shot them out before, but I'm just going to give them another shout out. Shout out to Kenya. <laughs> We need to get you the map of Africa so you can reach out to the other nations because they feel left out. Just close your right. eyes and put your finger on it. Like, uh, that one. <laughs> That's what we're going with today. Somalia? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we're going to big up Kenya and Somalia yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> to the right, Banks on the Beat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Banks on the Beat. Blue Water Banks. Uh, Fat Boy Tire. Shout out. Come on now. 3700 Wilkinson Boulevard. You know the hub. 3700. Uh huh. Uh huh. And today, our special guest is the creative genius behind CLT Graffiti, Matthew Morrison. Yo, yo, you get the yo, it's your boy, Matty Mo. Spit the fire, spit the flow. Oh. You know? Shoot. You got to <laughs> get a free that's, 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 hey, hey, that's just my line. That's my line. <laughs> you guys all got your little catchphrases. I got to drop mine. Oh, yeah, mine, you right? know. That's how we do. Jack of all spades nation know how we do it. But. Definitely, before we start, we want to pull the curtain back, a little, offer a little transparency to the listeners. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we were actually supposed to record this, I want to say, four hours ago, but <laughs> things had happened, Damn. miscommunication with the, with the establishment. Yep. So instead, we went to Pinky's and broke bread as brothers. Mm -hmm. It went well, and we got to shout out Matt's shirt, because he said he bought it <laughs> specifically for the hey. podcast. <laughs> Trying so, to look fresh, <laughs> trying to look fresh. High fashion in here. That's yes, it, yes. It. All right, so let's get into it. All right, Matt, for those who don't follow, CLT Graffiti highlights the dopest street art in the city. What inspired you to create this movement? And let me say this, it's definitely a movement. A lot of people have said that. Um, honestly, uh, I've lived in Charlotte since 2008, uh, moved down to kind of South End area, and now Plaza Midwood starting in 2012. For a long time, the movement's been building. A lot of murals been popping up over a, a, quite a long time. And too often, I was riding by in my vehicle wondering, you know, what was that mural I just drove past? So I never got a good mm -hmm. shot of it. And I was like, maybe there's an account on Instagram that kind of documents all these murals. I didn't find one, so I was like, all right, I'll try and do it myself. Straight up. So that's okay. pretty much straight Straight answer. <laughs> <laughs> good answer, good answer. Yeah, is that good? Is that good? <laughs> that, that works. Will this be on the final test? <laughs> <laughs> um, so can you take the time to educate our listeners or our audience what's the difference between a muralist and a street artist, graffiti artist? Yeah, sure. So um, there, ultimately, there's not a huge difference between a muralist or a street artist. There's a big difference between, you know, a, a graffiti writer, which mm -hmm. is what you would typically call someone who's like, writing their tag or their name on the street versus a muralist who's commissioned, paid to do the work. So the difference is a muralist is paid to do it. It's his profession, whereas a graffiti writer is someone who would hit the streets trying to get some, you know, underground, you know, recognition. Right. And, you know, you don't have to go through all the hoops of trying to get someone to give you permission to do something. You just do it, you know? Hmm. All right. Respect that. Yep. So how much time goes into you finding these street artists and the murals? Yeah, so I, I'm a big, I ride my bike all over the city, so I'm a big okay. biker, and um, just, you know, I am not, like, big, I'm not wearing, like, spandex pants or anything. I was anything. just about just, to yeah. ask. That's going to be my no. follow-up question. No, I wear regular-ass <laughs> clothes, but um, just uh, ride my bike around the city and um, just kind of cut through all the alleyways and try and find random things, and it's amazing what kind of things you come across, man, between small stickers to... Giant murals you didn't know were there, um, and then once occasionally when you find like a mecca spot where there's just an amazing graffiti piece one after another where it's like illegal writers just going at, going to town on the wall mm -hmm. because it's away from the public eye so you have they had time to get in there and right. do their thing right so I mean sometimes there's some spots in Charlotte that are killer. Nice. Hmm. Okay. So let's take it back to the first IG post. You mm -hmm. have a finger doing a peace sign. So what was that the first official post for your page? Positivity, Positivity, peace, love, yeah, trying to just send the right message. Um, just, you know, trying to start off on a good foot. Never actually found out who actually did that piece. So <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if they were local, but, yeah, you know, just uh, something that caught my eye, and I figured why not start with something that was, you know, sending on a, starting on a good note. I try really hard to keep positive vibes, you know, on my page and not dig too much into drama and all the nonsense of the world and just trying to keep it, you know, positive vibe, good energy. Mm -hmm. well, we definitely a fan of that. Oh, yeah. So going back to that first um, post, do you remember what the location was, like where it was at? Yeah, it's in South End. South it's End? Flower Shop. Yeah, it's um, 
right near where the old, I don't know how long you guys, if you're from Charlotte or if you hung out in South End before they turned up these big buildings over there, right. but the old common market that used to be oh, in the yeah. alleyway is right across <coughs> straight from where that used to be. And there actually was a really historic um, mural over there in South End uh, by Carlina Person. She was part of the Charlotte Art League. And I don't know if you guys remember that big, like, abstract, a bunch of different uh, primary colors. It actually had Charlotte hidden in the artwork. Um, but the ultimate, the, the Charlotte Art League was located out, out there. And um, ultimately, they moved locations. They sold the building. And in 2012, like maybe like four or five months after they, she painted that mural, she was killed in a car accident. Oh, wow. So it was like, this is like a very important piece of art to the local art scene. And of course, Charlotte being Charlotte Inc., if you will, um, they sold the building, bulldozed the wall, turned it into a bunch of windows, and uh, got rid of history, man. Mm-hmm. So kind of homage to that original piece that was there, because that was probably the first mural that really stood out to me as like something that really caught my eye that I really enjoyed. You was know? that on Camden, you saying? Uh, I think so. Um, no, what or was it on? Where, where was Black Sheep? And on Camden. On Camden. That, so Camden? Okay, yeah. Street next to that Observer building that used to be there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. And that yep. map, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and that was an awesome piece. And just so much respect to that whole scene. And, you know, it's crazy. A lot of the people that were really close to her then – are still in the scene and I mean talking about her it's always a very reverent thing mm-hmm. to do and you know you gotta show respect to it and she was yeah, yeah. And that was before murals were a thing man nowadays because of Instagram everyone's trying to get that Instagrammable wall you know yeah, yeah. show yeah. awareness to their you know their business before this was before any of that was a thing this was like one of the first like historic murals that was in Charlotte in my opinion but Dang. yeah hmm. well I got, I got a question though um about locations right yeah so I noticed on each of your posts underneath they have like numbers. Are those coordinates? Yeah. Those are yep, those are GPS coordinates. Okay. And if you I so thought I, so. So every morning in the morning I post a mural that shows location. And, and I could do like the address, right? Yeah. But part of the fun in mural hunting is finding them, right? So it's like I could tell you exactly where it is and but that takes all the fun out of it. Mm-hmm. If you really want to know exactly where it is, you can punch those numbers into Google and it'll tell you within one foot of where that damn mural is. Nice. Wow. Um, but <clears throat> part of it is the adventure of getting out in the streets and finding it, right? So it's like, I'm not going to spoon feed you every location you ever want to do, right? And then for the pieces I, I post in a legal piece in the afternoon, just after one o'clock, I always put zeros there. I noticed that. Because yeah. when I started up, everyone's like, who the fuck is this dude blowing up my scene? <laughs> I'm going to get arrested. <laughs> Are you a cop? And so I was like, all right, respect. You got to... You know, straight I was on. very new to the scene. I didn't know anyone in the scene. They kind of set me straight and were like, if you're going to do this, do it right. So heard, okay. adapted. And that's a, that's a big works. up, though. Yeah, you yeah, you ingratiated real. yourself to the street culture scene here because I'm sure it's different than another city. So oh, dude, yeah. you, did it, you did it the right way. Yeah, Charlotte's an interesting city. Everyone, you know, if you're not from Charlotte, you guys are from Charlotte, so you know this. But people who aren't from here are like, why would you go to Charlotte? They've got no culture. They've got no arts. They've got, they don't have a lot going for it. It's all just bankers and, you know, white-collar businessmen. Hmm. But if you dig into it, there's so much art here. And it's just, Charlotte is a vacuum for talent. If you've got talent in Charlotte, specifically in the art scene or honestly any other creative scene, you will be recognized. And that's what I've come to appreciate about it. It's such a unique city in that sense. So okay. specifically right. with uh, art, I mean, the there's only a handful. I could count probably in less than a minute the writers that are in Charlotte, like the illegal artists. And I mean, just top-notch talent you know so i mean it's really really awesome how tight it is keeping it with the arts but we're going to switch switch focus keep it away from the street art real quick yeah so here jack of all spades we're real big into the music so on one of the posts that you have you had an artist by the name of at on instagram stee s-t-e-e underscore v E E <laughs> underscore wonder. So yeah. Stevie Wonder essentially. And that's one of my favorite musicians of all time. Yeah. Yeah. So I know off air we had a conversation. We uh, talked about Diplo, Flux Pavilion, you know. Oh yeah. Dubstep days. Forgot about that. So yeah. who else are you listening to? Who else are you tuned into? Oh man, I'm in, I'm tuned into a bunch of stuff. Um everything from like your local talent, like the baby, obviously is someone that's getting right. a lot of you know attention right now. It's, it's awesome. I remember when he did that whole uh, Panthers music video back when that 2015 before he was doing anything. But that was, I mean, that's always cool. But like blue collar or blue collar bluegrass music, like Andrew <laughs> Bird, um, old school. Like you were playing uh, "Summertime Madness." That is right. one of my jams. And like Church. Um, <laughs> summer tunes, man. I've been jamming out to like all like the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. 
Uh, um, <laughs> great soundtrack. Dude, amazing soundtrack. It's mm-hmm. oldies, just nothing but great, you know, rubber band, man. I can rock out a rubber band, man, all day long. <laughs> and I can blast it, and I've got older neighbors. I can blast my music in my yard, and no one says anything, because at least they know it. And yeah, they're like, like eh, it's so, yeah. cool. That's right? what's up. So, mm. yeah, it's probably where I'm at. All right. <laughs> So another thing we've been going to is giving people their flowers while they're still here. And like we mentioned earlier, you know, you have a movement. And through this movement, you was able to raise $6,227 through an art auction big up. in mm-hmm. honor for mm-hmm. George Floyd. Mm-hmm. Um, big up to Cisco as well. He, he he put in two pieces. I believe it was two. Two pieces. Yep. Yep. Oh, hold on, but who's Cisco? You talking oh. about him like you know <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Cisco. That's my, that's my, that's my brother. That's my little brother, oh, Cisco. Yeah. I didn't know Cisco. that. I was yeah. like, dude, he was like, throw it on. I was like, sure, let's go. Let's throw it up there. That's what's up. But um, how was that entire experience, you know, doing that? Dude, it was wild. Honestly, something that I've come to appreciate about this whole Instagram account is as it's grown, it has grown into a life of its own. Someone reached out to me. He was like, I'm a big fan of your account. I've got a local artist's artwork. And I was hoping we could auction it off on your page since you've got a bigger following than I do, see how much money we could raise and put it towards a good nonprofit. And I was like, I mean, sure, why not? I can give it a shot. And I had a couple pieces of artwork. I was like, I'll throw those on there. And um, we, we gave it a go. And then we announced like a day before we were going to do it that we had like five artists who were donating artwork to auction off. And then all of a sudden, like 30 plus artists just reached out to me, DM me. I want to throw in a piece. I want to throw in a piece. I want to throw in a piece. And mm-hmm. that was awesome too because it was like top notch, high quality art wow. that is usually, you know, pretty pricey stuff. And, um, and then what was even crazier was, man, people started getting into bidding wars and like <laughs> throwing down. I was just amazed. Like one of the most expensive pieces, Jonathan Stewart's wife was bidding on a piece. Oh, which, yeah. I was like getting some attention and like it ended up selling for 500 bucks, man. And it blew me away after. Two weekends of doing that, we raised over six grand. But I will tell you, we didn't do it on any special platform, and it was time consuming, just kind of monitoring it, making sure that you know everyone was in the know of what was going on, who was winning the bids, closing out the bids. I had tracked all the receipts, like I filed all the receipts, made a spreadsheet just so in case you know any questions come up about what right. happened to the money, I've got all that. So I actually didn't even touch the money, I just had people donate directly and then just show me a screenshot of the receipt and then I save that. So I didn't have to touch the money, which was even better. (laughs) So I didn't have to worry about my damn taxes about it. So dude, it was amazing. And then, yeah, I mean, it got so much attention. It was wild. And then, so what's even crazier about it, um, the African American community fund, which is what we donated to, which is a subset of foundation for the Carolinas. They only had like 15 posts and like a hundred followers on their Instagram account. Mm -hmm. Now they've blown up quite a bit. Red Ventures knows about them, and they were doing like a, a fundraising match program for nice. a while. Like okay. all these different groups are all of a sudden showing love to this organization that didn't know about it before because I guess you know word of mouth and social yeah. media, right? So that's powerful. Nah, but just just I got to stop you right there and just you know big up the people that's doing the grassroots movement because a lot of times, especially during this climate of the mm-hmm. just all this all that's going on in the world right now, people are always asking, "What can I do?" Right. And, you just got to do it like you right. like you did. You set up something. Hey, I got this this art page. People reached out. You put the work up there, and you were able to generate a lot of money for a good cause. So yeah, big up, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, but I'm. It wasn't about me, man. I'm just the platform. Mm-hmm. It's all the artists, man. They did all the heavy lifting. It was their artwork, and these people. This is how they live. This is how they you know feed their family. So the fact that they're willing to throw money, throw their artwork down, their livelihood down, and then have people donate as much as they did. I mean. I'm just the middleman. I'm just connecting dots. Hey, you know? We love that. Yeah, about, right? We love that. As far as putting an event together like that, and you say, you know, it took, um, there were 30 people that came later on. Mm-hmm. How are you able to manage, you know, so many people almost like toward the last minute of it as compared to what you had? And like, is there a submission or like, how's that go? Send me a screenshot, retail value and size. And then I just made a, <laughs> <That's> uh, <simple. laughs> uh, made a post. I had a, I had like a template, just copy and paste it and switched out the names and, Wow, yeah, facts, okay. All Just the artists listening. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And um, we were looking at doing it on like Shopify, but then there's fees and then there's this whole process and it was off the page. And the benefit of Instagram was the comments are right there. Just bid right there. If you see someone who's bid more than you. I uh, bid them again. Bid so, again, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it worked out far better than I ever would have imagined. So, crazy. But, dude, it was awesome. I love it. I think it's kind of cool when a creation kind of, Oh, no doubt. Just takes on its yeah. own life, and it's like, on you its just kind of ride. I'm just riding the coattails of this thing now. It's <laughs> hilarious. 
Now I'm on a podcast. What's that about? Man, <laughs> what? I told hey, you I'm just a dude, man. <laughs> just just to that point, the whole reason we know about CLT graffiti is through one of our brothers, Ismail. Mm-hmm. Shout out. You know, yeah. he he's big into the art. He would always post, you know, yep. your posts. Yep. And then we just reached out and like, yo, who is this dude? He's like, Y'all should have him on the podcast. Hell yeah. And look, here we are. Dude, you know, Ishmael's He's the dog, man. He's always posting my stuff. Fulanito. <laughs> That's it. He's. I'm always trying to post, again, with that sense of positivity. I always try, occasionally I'll put like a little YouTube video in my story just to g- give people a perspective on, you know, life and, you know, different philosophers, videos and stuff. And he's always showing the love to that. And you know what's crazy? When I started the account, I wasn't sure if I should throw that stuff in because like on YouTube, I listen to a lot of that kind of philosophical stuff. Alan Watts, things like that. Jim Carrey's really philosophical. I post a lot yeah, of his videos. Yeah. And he's like a real artist type. And um, it's so weird. One day, um, back in March, actually, my grandmother had passed away, and I posted this video. It was all about life and death and kind of the how it's all the same thing and how it's just this great spiritual journey that we're all on. And, and then he just, like, reached out. He's like, man, that really touched me. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, my grandmother just passed away. And it's like he just – he said mm-hmm. – we were talking about it um, when we met up for the first time. He's like, I just – there was like some – I wasn't even me. I don't know why I reached out. I just felt like I should reach out. And it's like that that divine connection, that universal kind of energy that's kind of working through us, you know? Mm. So, I mean, it was wild. So, yeah, yeah, much love to that dude. Yeah, man. All right. Keeping it with the events, uh, can you speak on events like Talking Walls and Can Jam, Can Jam and um, as far as the opportunities that pre- presents for different artists? Yeah, so Talking Walls has been around. They just finished, well, not just finished, they're about to have their third year, which is just a big Charlotte mural festival, trying to continue to bring in international artists. Oh, big up. Um, and get some good walls done by some big names to kind of make Charlotte a bigger scene for the street art mural scene. Um, and I'm butchering that. I'm not a formal spokesperson for talking walls. <laughs> hey, so you, did job. you did a great job. You did a great job. But I actually, t- I'll tell you another story about that. But um, um, Can Jam is a sick, awesome opportunity for like yeah, up and coming artists it's put on by a single dude osiris rain he does murals all over the city in his old studio he's in tight with the owner of the building and he's like let me on my own dollar get artists out here to do um murals all over this building and just kind of again try and beautify charlotte and kind of put new artists on so he'll bring in artists that no one knows about or just up and coming as simple as just applying and if you want to do it you can get a space on there and he just puts people on and I can't say enough good things about that man. He just is constantly trying to bring the community together. Last night he did a, a movie for shorts, which is a shorts a short film movie festival that he did, nice. socially distant outside. He put a yeah. big, big big projector up and got everyone together and was selling, letting the new artists put a little stand up and sell their art and just kind of raise awareness and bring the community together. You know, which is all we need. So, but yeah. yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah. All right, so we talked about it. We touched the surface a little bit. So for newcomers to the city, they may only think Noda is the you know artistic part of Charlotte, but you the man. You know what's up. You you go deep into it. So where are other places in Charlotte that people can find you know dope street art? Dude, all over this city. They're everywhere. Um, everywhere. There's a giant mural by Darian Fleming, or Da Flamingo is what he goes by on Instagram, up in... Uh, Ballantine, there's murals up. In, there's right. murals up in University. Obviously, the most prevalent areas are Uptown, Noda, Plaza Midwood, and uh, South End. South End. I feel like they still have a little bit of growing to do and putting more murals up over there. But Noda, um, yeah, Noda and Plaza Midwood are pretty strong in that sense for sure. All right. So everybody who listens know how dope our research team is. So, so we found so we found this article <laughs> from an artist on Instagram, Paper Paste, and <laughs> the magazine that um, interviewed him found him because you tagged him on a post. So you were that bridge, like you said, connecting the dots. Can yep. you just talk about how does it feel to be a major voice for the Charlotte um, art scene? It's weird. <laughs> it's <really> weird. <laughs> Great answer. It's yeah. weird, yeah. <laughs> Speak um, on that. Um, You know, it's so funny because, all right, so for anyone who's listening, if you're going to post a picture of a mural, the only, the real only rule is just make sure you tag the artist. If you can find out, there's a lot of times they'll put their handle on the corner of the mural. 
tag the artist. And so that's like one of the sticking points of like a lot of these guys. If someone posts a picture, they want to make sure that their name's getting out there, right? So a lot of times if someone doesn't tag it, they get a little, you know, frustrated with that. So Charlotte is Creative posted a picture of one of Paper Paste's uh, paste up um, pieces and they hadn't tagged him. And I assume because he doesn't, it's illegal, so he's not putting his name on it, but I just tagged at Paper Paste in the comments and it was within like a few minutes of them posting it. And they were like, wow, the, the powers of Instagram, <laughs> they tell us everything. I don't know. So it was, I mean, that was a fun little um, kind of serendipitous experience. And now I'm doing articles for him on a, trying to do it on a monthly basis. COVID, things have kind of gotten a little choppy, but yeah. So now I'm getting some publicity over there in that way. So uh, it's been fun. Segway King. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> like you said, so you doing articles now for Charlotte's Creative. You did three so far, correct? Am I right? I think so, yeah. Yep. Three. Yep. So how did you go from being the plug to the street arts to artistic journalist? How'd that happen? Uh, he just asked me to start writing articles <laughs> for him. So, I mean, I don't know. I can be honest with you. I'm not much of a writer. I don't really... It's not my strong suit. I'm not motivated behind it, but I mean, I'll do it. Um, but what is cool about it is getting to know the artists. It's like looking at a piece of artwork is cool and saying, oh, that's cool. I'm walking away. But once you know the artist personally and you're like, oh, I know the dude that did that or I know the dude that did that or I know that girl that, you know, killed this wall. It just adds a whole nother flair to it. Right. You're like, I can I know exactly why they did this style or she did that or they did this. I mean, it's just just adds an extra flair to it. So um, I can't really say exactly how I became that, but I mean, like I said, this whole Instagram account has become a life of its own and it's kind of weird. I don't know, as, as it's grown in success, more people have been reaching out, trying to kind of collaborate and figure out how to work together, so. It's a movement, man, like we That's said. It, it yeah, really is, yeah. man. It's a great way to bring people up too, you know, like I think there could be a lot of opportunities in like kind of putting more organizations together to educate younger kids on artistic, you know, means like that. and It's bring needed, them up, right? It's needed yeah. because I know in some spaces they've, you know, cut funding for the arts. Right, mm -hmm. So exactly. And there's no shortage of people that want to educate people, people on it. So, and like down central towards the Hispanic side of town, there's so many empty walls. It's like, dude. Opportunity. Opportunity, yeah. right? Or like even like on Beatty's Ford, like Georgie, the gar Garden of Journey, um, did that first mural with a, Booker T. Washington on it, and then this past weekend or two weekends ago, they did the Beatty's Ford Strong or Ford Strong. Right, yeah. And uh -huh. they've been doing murals over there. But aside from that, there's no murals over there. It's like no one's cared to try and flare up that side of town, which, I mean, they've been neglected for a long time, unfortunately. But, you know, hopefully with an increased attention with murals, more opportunity will continue to flourish over there. So I think it's a great bridging of opportunity, you know, and kind of pushing people outside their boundaries Absolutely. a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Now, to segue out of your journalism. We need to get out of that. <laughs> you're doing pretty well, man. You know, we yeah, I appreciate big that. Big up, big up. Too nice. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um, at the same time, we are aware that you had a podcast, uh, Pennies, Nickels, and Dimes, where yep. you covered everything from UFOs, Oh yeah, automotive industry, mm -hmm. yep. and you even went into white rappers. <laughs> <laughs> we need that was just one that we were just like... <laughs> We were just talking. Man. <laughs> we were talking about like the Karens. You hear? Did you hear the videos? Course, like they're, right? like, they're like, stop. Mike. I'm sorry. <laughs> we were just like, that was a good we're, we're right? literally <laughs> just watching video YouTube videos while we're sitting in front of the mics. We were like, we were just totally spent on that. <laughs> so, me and my buddy uh, Xavier Hemphill, he actually uh, now has a YouTube channel. Um, Shout out. Right X Drive. He's the man. He he's been doing his YouTube channel for less than a year. He's almost got like a thousand followers. He's freaking crushing it but he's big into automotive uh motorcycles and everything like he's just a gearhead so he's doing that and that's actually why we talked about the uh automotive stuff on that podcast but yeah so he's a guy i went to college with i went to unc charlotte and he's just someone who's you know always been a creative guy as well and you know he's like a lot of people he approached me about trying to do a podcast because he's big into podcasts and he's like a lot of our friends you know a lot of people talk about wanting to do things but when the rubber hits the road they're so nowhere to truth. be found. So right? much truth in that statement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he was like, but you, whenever you want to do something, you get, you go in head first and just get totally obsessed with it. So he's like, I want to try and do this podcast with you. And we did it for a while, but the um, the back end post production stuff, <laughs> too much. Shout out Marlo. <laughs> yeah. Too, <laughs> too <laughs> much work. Too much work. So that ultimately died. But. Uh, <laughs> What's funny is we stopped doing it, and then we immediately both went and did our own thing. 
but we're still tight, obviously, because we're boys. Yeah. He's doing his YouTube channel. I'm doing CLT Graffiti, and we're both just like doing our thing, just in our own lanes. Just we've talked about collaborating a few times, like doing reviews in front of murals and trying Ooh, to, that's you know, dope. right? Because he's always like getting cars and reviewing them and stuff, and I mean, he's killing it. So look, check out Ride at, Ride X Drive if you like cars. I see an opportunity Ride for X -Drive, a Ride X -Drive. Jack of All Spades CLT. CLT graffiti collaboration, and we could document it as you're, you know, reviewing the yeah. mural. Dude, that would be awesome. Yeah, man. It's a great idea. Yeah, I mean, anywhere to connect, you know, like minded creative people, I'm always down for it, you know. Mm -hmm. Did you have a uh, favorite topic that you might have went over on the PND? Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they're here. That's all I can say. UFOs are here, man. Too much. I, I get lost in too many YouTube <laughs> videos and I've read too many books and I'm telling you guys, the UFOs are here, the government knows about it, likely extraterrestrial involvement. I mean, it's crazy. The psychics are real. The CIA had a program in the 70s called Project Stargate where they literally had psychic spies spying on the Russians because the Russians were doing it to us and we were like, what's this psychic shit about? And they, and they found them. They found psychics and they started doing it, dude, and like to like crazy levels of accuracy. Wow. So then I'm thinking... Okay, so now I know. UFOs are real. Aliens are real. Psychics are real. Tell me there's an upside down. I'm not going to challenge them <laughs> on it. I'm like, all right, there's a possibility it's real. So it keeps, me, keeps things in perspective. But so last two weeks ago or something, the Senate Intel Committee demanded from the Department of Defense to furnish within 180 days a public report. And I'm not sure if this will actually happen, but a public report detailing everything the government knows and the military knows about UFOs, extraterrestrials, incursions on sensitive airspace like over missile sites because like ufos have been known to like fly over nuclear missile sites and shut them down or send them into countdown mode it's like they, there's so many crazy things out there that's happened sort of. yeah wow. that could be like a whole podcast in this so we gotta get you back in to break down <laughs> Dude, all the new ones break it down. bring d lo back uh, yeah, you oh, know yeah, we know you know our boy Capofino. so oh, yeah bring y'all yeah, big on that too it. bring it in dude, dude. <laughs> we're we gonna set that up dude, dude i'm we're down gonna, we're gonna dude, i will go into detail i'll talk for days about it cool. man. and cool. i actually got to i met one of the psychic spies like wow in february at a talk it was wild that's to keep it on that same kind of theme so i want to say it was probably a couple months ago um, I seen an article published. I think it was from NASA. If I'm wrong, you know, don't kill me on nope, a, on a I'm listenership. Wrong. But um, they talked about how they may have discovered a parallel universe where time went backwards. Did you see I did. that? I saw okay. that. Yeah, dude. Okay. I don't even. That's the thing, man. I don't know how to like, conceptualize some of this stuff. Like that's it. <laughs> it's a very humbling experience. You know, a lot of people when they learn more, they think they know more, right? The more I learn, I feel like it's a ring of knowledge, right? And outside the ring is what you don't understand. So as soon as you learn more, the ring gets bigger. Mm. And then all of a sudden there's that much more knowledge that you that's don't correct. recognize correct. you don't know, right? So the more I learn, the less I understand shit. It it's keeps never me in the process. Exactly. It's never so, the process. so sure, there probably is a opposite version of this that's rewinding backwards at how we get there. I don't know. Do we really want to get there? Probably at this point, right? <laughs> yeah, it's 2020. It might be I know. coming. I hey, know, right? For real. For so, real. I don't know. Wendy's last year tweeted about us getting yeeted to the upside down. So I was like, <laughs> Wendy's knew something. I don't know. Now, uh, were there any lessons you learned from PND that helped you with uh, CLT graffiti? Yes, absolutely. It is all about consistency. Mm. Consistency all day. If you can be consistent, the algorithms of whatever platform you're on will like you and they'll push your information up and you'll get attention. And then I realized the less behind the scenes overhead you have to do post-production was like a, it was a weak point for me I wasn't very good at it so the amount of time it took to get that out really kind of deflated the excitement around it right like you have this great idea then you have to execute on it and actually you know make it real CLT graffiti take a picture go to Google find the coordinates copy paste your tags, whatever, done, post it, right? So, <laughs> Not too tedious. No, exactly. It's like easy. I've got, at any given time, I've got about 150 posts in my queue on <laughs> Instagram. Just That's content. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just keep it going. So and that's I, wild. I know we talked off air, but just to put it out there, full transparency, at CLT Graffiti is the social at CLT Graffiti, and you do p two posts a day, correct? Two posts a day, one of a mural and one of street art sticker, um, which they call them slaps in the in the scene or, you know, graffiti piece or something like that, you know. 
Right. Yeah, I heard mm-hmm. that. Follow at CLT Graffiti. Mm-hmm. Dopest street art in the city and surrounding areas. Because I've noticed that you go outside of Charlotte as well. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I have any that are oh, outside of Charlotte. I see, there's I, there's I one that, that was like in Asheville. Concord. Nope. It was uh, Concord. Okay. I did one in Concord that was done by a local Charlotte artist, and I was okay. just up there for work. Um, but I have done – so on my stories, I'll do – so I went to Denver, and I documented a bunch of stuff, and I'll make yeah, it, it into like a little story on the top of my page. But, yeah, I try and keep it consistent because a lot of people can post, you know, street art and – go anywhere and take pictures, but I want this to be, since it's Charlotte Graffiti, I want it to be consistent to, here's what's going on in Charlotte, right? And makes sense. It makes it a strong, it only bolsters the art scene, right? Like yeah. a lot of cities don't have that, that like dedicated account that just is constantly documenting what's going on yeah. in a city. So yeah, it's cool. Once again, you the leader of the movement. Mm-hmm. I'm trying. <laughs> All right, so kind of, kind of shifting gears. As we do, <laughs> you even talked about farm animals on your podcast, PND. So I gotta ask, and I'm sure the listeners want to know, who is Matt the Nature Guy? <laughs> I'm Matt the Nature Guy. I'm Matty Mo. I'm Matt the Lighting Guy. I'm CLT Graffiti. I'm Tyson Street Terror. I'm PND Talks. I got a thousand different many interests. Has, many has. Yeah, dude, I do it all. So I'm, I'm also avid climate change advocate. You know, acknowledging that, and I'm big into nature and. I have chickens and I raise monarch butterflies in the summertime because they're endangered. Just a, a big nerd that's just into his hobbies that uh, just kind of digs into it. My Matt, the nature guy, I thought it was going to be a hit. I was like, this is, <laughs> one. this is it. But no, I've got like 300 followers and they're just like my college friends and family. So it's like, but yeah, you know, I just, I keep it casual there and it's kind of nice not to feel like any pressure just to like post consistently there. I just post what I want to post on there and, yeah, I mean, just my, that's my personal life. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Yeah. So um, what do you hope people gain from CLT Graffiti? Just the, so, so many times when I tell people about the account, they tell me, oh, I love the murals in Charlotte, but I don't get the, the illegal street art. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, look at it. Some, it's so fine. It's so, you try and make a hard line, <clears throat> excuse oh. me with a spray can, you know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. I can't do it for the life of me. And it's something that, you know, is really impressive, right? So I, gaining appreciation for the street art scene in general, I think is something that is of, you know, great interest of me. And then also just bringing the community together, you know, and trying to keep it positive and, you know, stay above the noise. There's a lot of noise out there and trying to keep focused on what's real, you know? Art's easy, art's an easy thing to do. But just on. just on that, man, like for anybody who's listening that cares that same opinion, art is art, whether it's commissioned, whether somebody's doing it illegal, illegally, exactly. like to me, art is art. Yeah. You and, know, and I digress on that. Dude, I absolutely agree, man. <laughs> People get so uppity and want to say that this is their scene and this is how it's supposed to be done. And it's like, and some people are like, don't come at me because you're too new or t- you're too novice or you're, you're not in, you haven't done the time or the effort yet. And it's like one, something I learned. So I, during on Carlina person's birthday, I actually did like a quick montage montage video of her on my story. Just kind of bring awareness to the newer Charlotte art scene to, you know, the history of what Charlotte has had in the past. And I talked with a lot of her close friends um, prior to doing that. And one of the guys I was talking to, um, sent me pictures of them together in the early 2000s or yeah, early 2010s. And there was a picture of them together at an art gallery in Charlotte. And he's like, Oh, um, the art, the guy that ran that art gallery has also passed away. And it's just this whole thing of every single generation of art. Art is always built on a previous generation. Everyone's standing on a previous generation's shoulders, right? Who's influenced your style, whether you want to admit it or not. Right. It's Mm -hmm. like, so pretending like you're the big dog on scene and you don't have time for the new guys that are trying to learn or you don't want to, you know, foster their creativity, you're only shooting yourself in the foot right. because all the ships rise with the tide. If mm. everyone's doing better, there is plenty of blank walls to work to do in Charlotte, especially. And, you know, everyone rises with the tide. So why not just, you know, invest in the new talent and build relationships and try and, you know, make something cool together, right? And what's even cooler is if you invest in them, then you can influence them even more, right? And educate them and teach them, you know, what's important and, you know, you know, help kind of foster that creativity and kind of see what really could be created. So completely agree. Like 
art is art. Art is art, period. There's no, there's no rules, you know? No rules and what is it? Love and art. Hey, you just dropped some gems, though, right that's there. It. Everybody that's rises it. with right. the tide. I like that. Yeah, that's it, man. I feel like that's the video clip that's going to come out when we're done, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Charlotte is such a unique city in regards to street art and graffiti and murals in general. One, graffiti here. There are such few writers that if you are someone who is consistently writing your name on shit in this city, you will be recognized. Every time I, if you look look at my street art, I'm constantly posting the same names. You want to know why? Because there's only a few guys that are out here doing it consistently that I can actually find their art of. So if you are someone with talent or you want to do it, you can do it in Charlotte and you will be recognized, right? Whereas if you go to Denver, if you go to Philly, if you go to New York, Chicago, LA, you go to Asheville, you're going to get drowned out by the noise. There's yeah. so much, there's so many people already there doing it. There's no one here doing it, right? So it's like, there's something to be had there. There's something of worthy pursuit. As far as like murals in LA, in Miami, and Philly, people want, it's such a big stage that people want to paint there so badly that all the building owners don't have to pay to get a mural done. So here in Charlotte, it's, it's in that sweet spot where there's not enough people that want to do it and people don't realize the value in it where you can still be profitable as hell as an artist. So it's like people are getting paid more now than they ever have like living artists in the current day, right? So it's message like, to the artists yeah. out right? there. Message. Exactly. So it's like, it's a beautiful, beautiful city because artists can survive and they can thrive. They don't, they're not surviving. They're thriving, you know, and like a lot of other cities, good luck trying to get paid in LA to do a mural, right? Mm -hmm. You can do that here. You can't do that there. So it's like, it's a, it is a hidden gem, man. I'm telling you, it's like people sleep on Charlotte way too much. And like I said, it's like that for all things. If you're if you are consistent and you have talent, you will be recognized in this city. Straight Shoot. up. Before Banks get to the last question, you kind of just said the whole emphasis of what we want to do with Jack of All Spades to highlight those hidden gems. Yep. The people, places, and things you need to know in CLT. Mm -hmm. That's what we're about. That's it. And you just said it right there. Dude, yeah, exactly. And that's that should be everyone's motivation. And that's I'm like, if you ever want to make it, man, come to Charlotte. If you have the energy, <laughs> do it here, you know. You, have, you might have the coolest damn idea in New York City. Well, guess what? There's about a thousand, a thousand other people that think mm -hmm. they got their cool idea too, right? Here, and it's like a purple-ass state. If you if you want to stand for something politically, you can fight for your beliefs and actually make a, a national difference, you know? So I think it's exciting as hell to be here. For sure. Yeah. Uh, to close things out, uh, how are you planning on uh, expanding the CLT graffiti movement, and how can we support that? Man, I don't know. I'm... I'm kind of at that point where I'm trying to scratch my head as to what I'm going to do next. I'm kind of not sure how I'm going to move forward. Obviously, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm not right. going away anytime soon. But, yeah, just keep on posting. And um, I think what would be really cool is what we were talking about before is, like, actually building a community where we can actually get some of those more forgotten parts of town, some murals. That's what I think would be really profound and could really add some flair, like, Compafino, the tattoo artist. You guys had yeah. him on here. Yeah, that's, that's that the homie. That's be, the brother. That dude needs to be painting up the Hispanic side of town, man. He's, I'm sure he's got the connects. D'Lo, stop playing. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> he needs to get over there and start painting all the walls. Get him and his whole crew over there painting the walls, you know, and like really raising up that community. And, you know, he's just super talented. And, you know, I, I just want to see him do more. That's all. Facts. So, all right. Yeah. Well, has, it, has it been an hour already? Shoot, I don't, I don't I even know. Track. I mean, I feel like it went through. <laughs> I know, know we nice. went so fast. <laughs> but, you know, like all good things, mm -hmm. we must come to an end. <laughs> so, Matt, Matthew Morrison, Matt, Matty Mo. Matty Mo. <laughs> Shout out to socials so the people can find you. Yes, sir. So, I'm on Instagram, CLT Graffiti. Exactly how's it, how it sounds. So it should be spelled. Yeah. Nothing special, no, <laughs> no underscores. No variations. Nope. Always imitated. I don't know what the other line is. I don't know. Never duplicate. Yeah. Never, Never duplicate. duplicate. <laughs> there it is. You hear that, Busters? That's all y'all poses out there. Watch out. CLT Graffiti is the original. Actually, there are a few that are before me. Oh, oh so right. let me take that back. Let me <laughs> you can't that stay. Delete that. Delete that. Delete that. Hey, yo, we're going to take that in post-production yeah, anyway. I'm going to bleep that out. <laughs> yo, straight up. That would be dope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's good. All, all love in the community, man. All yeah. love. All love. So you heard him right there. CLT Graffiti, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Matt, the nature guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but y'all already know who we are. Jack of all space CLT. You can find us on IG. 
Of course, if you want to tune in to the episode and past and future episodes, you can find us on Spotify. Yep. You can find us on Google Play, Google Podcasts. Yep. Yep. Of course, Apple Podcasts. Yep. Of course, Breaker, my favorite. <laughs> 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 but Anchor.fm is the platform that hosts us, so we thank them graciously. Hopefully, we can get some more money out of them. You know, you'll hear the ad through this episode by my boy Banks. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> But of course, like, listen, subscribe, and really write a review. We've had a lot of people like and subscribe, but nobody's left a review yet. I'm just kind of nudging y'all. We really want to get the feedback to see how we can grow as a podcast as well. I'm going to write my own review. I was about to say, I'm about to write a review. <laughs> that, that guy is really cool. <laughs> hey, we That's accept all reviews. We are, <laughs> no KD, no KD. <laughs> but good people, y'all know I am the beloved one. I am YBB. I got to shout out Kenya and Somalia one more time. Yes, Kenya, yes. Somalia. Proud of Africa. This is it. Yeah, Banks, Blue Water Banks. Uh, we're not going to get a freestyle out of Matt. <laughs> oh, a couple bars? That's part two. No. To yeah. be continued. No, exactly. To be continued. <laughs> you don't want to hear that, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't forget Marlo behind the scenes on the camera. Post-production king. So mm-hmm. shout out. And like I said, like listen follow subscribe all that good stuff rest in peace malik taylor if you don't know who that is fife dog tribe call quest tell mm-hmm. your mother tell mm-hmm. your father mm-hmm. send a telegram and we out <laughs>